we're going to make an octopus keychain today. I have gone ahead and uploaded the design onto my machine. If you need to know how to upload a design onto your machine, do a simple search and figure out how that's going to work best for you. So we're not going to go over all of that because everyone works with a different machine. Not everyone is working with the same machine that I am. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and we got some stuff that we need. I got my hoop, some tearaway stabilizer, and I've got two pieces of materials here. This first one is actually a vinyl. It's orange. I bought this at My Punk Broidery. They do have an online website. You can go ahead and look them up. I'll link them in the description. This is orange promo. This material, as you can see, folds over, folds in half. The back has a little bit, you can see interlocking woven pieces in the back. It's a little bit on the thick side, if you can see that. It's gonna be a lot thicker than what we're using for the back. This is pretty thin, you can tell. It's a little bit of a difference here. This is actually just black pleather. I found this in the cosplay section at Joanne. It does have some texturedness to it. You can also, the other place I buy this at too is also in the home decor section on the bolt at Hobby Lobby. Not the big rolls on the bolt. They do actually have some of this. People use it for upholstery. This is going to be for the back of our keychain. This is going to be for the front of our octopus. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to hoop the stabilizer. And I'm going to go ahead and load it onto my machine. All right, we got this all set up. Something that I like to do, and again, it's gonna be personal preference, is I'm gonna go ahead and baste my design. What on earth does that even mean? What that means is it's going to stitch an outline around my entire design, so that way I know where to place my tiny piece of fabric. I'm very big on using as much of your fabric as possible, so like being able to use it for your design and not wasting. I'm very zero waste. So in order to be that way, I actually have to do things such as base my design so that way I get the exact amount of material that I will need. And I do not use any more than that. So let's go ahead and do that on my machine real quick. Okay, so that's complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. Do you see these tiny dots, these dots here? or what my base did my design. You can kind of see the light through it. So I'm going to take, well normally what I would do is I would go ahead and get a ruler and measure out the dimensions. I would measure it out and then I would write it onto my stabilizer. It's tearaway stabilizer. You can actually write onto it. You're gonna throw it away later. So it's good for notes. I would cut out the same size piece of this orange as well as this black pleather. And so since I already did that, I'm going to go ahead and place my vinyl over. Make sure that you cover your outline or your design will not fit onto it. And the first step for this is actually to stitch an outline of my octopus. So let's go ahead and run that. Alright, so as you can see, it's already done. It did what it had an outline. So we're going to time lapse the rest of the steps until we need to 
put our black pleather on. So until that thing comes into play, we're gonna time lapse. If you'd like to follow along or if you have questions about the steps in between, all we're stitching out right now are details. And you'll find out about every single color change if you purchase this design on my Etsy shop. It'll come with a PDF and you can see all the various color changes that I'm making along the way. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and speed up and I'll meet you when we're done. So we are done stitching out all of our details. So I like to trim these little stragglers along the way, but they always seem to have some at the end. Just clean it up real quick. Not to get any cotton in your stitches. Just roughly. You can make it nice and pretty at the end. Just so. Okay. So I've taken this off of my machine as you can see and now we're going to go ahead and take this, flip it over, Okay. we're going to take our black pleather piece and we're going to also align it over the same holes that we saw and you can either use some temporary adhesive spray like 505 spray but today we're just going to tape it down just because for this video all right now i'm going to tape it down again make sure you covered the outline if you did it this way all right, all right painter's tape works Clear tape works. I only am using the paint because I just ran out of my scotch tape and I have to reload it. So there we go. Load it. Okay, so here's the thing. Before we load it back onto the machine, right now I've got white thread in my bobbin, but the back of this is black. I like for them to blend seamlessly, so I'm going to take this out and do matching thread. So I'm going to go ahead and take black thread because this is going to show up on the underside of my keychain. So I'm gonna go ahead and load some black in here. You can do whatever you want, but the top of my outline's black. A lot of times I like to have black on the back. It's just a personal, personal preference that I have. It doesn't really make a difference. This is just the point in the game where you gotta make a decision. What type of back do you use and do you change your bobbin thread? All decisions you will make creatively okay so now the next two steps are going to stitch down our octopus and make the fold over tab so first let's go ahead and do our outline okay. so the outline stitched out what I'm gonna do now is we're going to stitch out the tab Again, this is the point where you will come and make a decision on how you want to do this. I like for my fold over tabs to blend seamlessly into the vinyl I chose to use. That being said, I'm going to use orange because I don't want you to see it. I want you to be able to focus on my octopus and not on the stitching. Some people like to see stitching and they like that look. I don't. So I am going to do this. Now I'm going to stitch out the tab. Okay, so now our design is done. Now I'm gonna show you what I meant. So you see here, this is the fold over tab. And I like this stitching to blend in because I want this design to just pop. I do this with most of my stuff, but 
I like this look. So this is something that I choose to do. But if you wanted to, you could make this also black or any other color you wanted. This is just going to be a design preference. So let's go ahead and get this off the machine. Okay, so I've taken it off the machine. Next step will be to unhoop it. Go ahead and put your hoop to the side and rip away all this stabilizer. Let's go ahead and rip it. I told you we weren't going to need it. You could ride all over it. You could doodle on it. You could do whatever the heck you want with it. But we are going to get rid of it. All right. So what we're left with. Now we're going to cut this out. Actually, let's go ahead and just do some of this fine, fine tooth trimming. You'll see some threads that get cut in here, locked up. All right, like some things that just don't belong. And we're gonna work on getting those out. Um, many others. Sometimes you can just see them. Okay, and now I was looking at it from the side. Oh yeah, sometimes when you put it at an angle, you can see all the little threads that seem to blend in. Oh, there's another one. If you're ever in doubt, you can run a lint roller over it and it some tends to pick up. The stickiness of it will pick up threads you didn't know were loose. Okay, now we'll look at the back. Oh, let me take this tape off. Okay, so now you can see, well actually you can't see because it blends in so nicely, these stitches right here. See the stitches? And then here's the orange. So we're just going to go ahead and cut these loose ones. There should be a start and stop thread. Again, if you're not sure where they are, look on the side and you'll find them. Okay, so I see I like mine to look like this on the back. I don't like for it to be so noticeable. I like the design to just mainly be on the front. All right, so now let's work on cutting. Just go ahead and take a, you can go ahead and designate a pair of scissors to be solely for vinyl cutting. I know that's a very popular thing to do so that we don't get your nice fabric scissors. These were my fabric scissors and then someone decided it was a good idea to start cutting things around the house with them and they got nicked and dulled. So now their purpose is for vinyl. So let's go and cut it out. Alright, let's see. I like to start at the top because it's straight. And straight seems to be able to get this motion going rather smoothly. So just get as close as you would like. Beware the stitches. You don't want to snip the stitches or you snip the whole design. I like to get as close as I can. The way you hold your scissors does matter up and down like this means that you are going to cut both pieces up and down at the same time. If you move like this, you'll have an overbite. If you cut angled like this, you'll have an underbite. So just be mindful. And the other thing is, is use your non-dominant hand to this one for me to turn your vinyl and then keep the scissors straight. So your dominant hand is the muscle and your non-dominant hand is actually going to turn the wheel. And here we go. And just keep cutting. You can go in as far as you'd like, but do I want to? Well, I guess we'll do it just so we could show you that you can with this design. All right, so these ones are a little trickier. get in real close. You could have just skipped over this and just made a wider outline. 
but I just want to show you that it can be done if you're as stubborn as I am. Or as crazy, I guess. Are they really different? I don't know. All right, again, keep turning slowly. Slow and steady wins the race. You want nice, clean lines and turn. Okay, I didn't really like that, so I'm gonna go over again and get a little closer. There we go. And I like to cut closer to the base. I feel like you have the most control when it comes to this, if you get closest to the base of the scissors, as opposed to cutting way out here. Like you have no control over that. Like the lack of control is, you lose it. All right, again, straight. I like to just go because it's straight. And then I come back and curve this out or round it out, whatever. So here we go, around, again, slow and steady, wins the race. All right, so here we are. Now here we got our octopus. So we're going to put hardware onto this guy. Things I'm going to use, these snap tabs. They're size 20. You can find them on Amazon. Or you can find them at, they do have some like at Joanne and Hobby Lobby. They are sold mainly with like diaper supply stuff because people use them to snap on, you know, diapers. You can also go to Cam Snaps and buy yourself some snaps. They have many, many, many colors. If you go to your local craft store, I would get just the basic colors because that's all they have just to start. And then if you get really serious into this, expand with your colors and buy them on Amazon in like a color assortment or just go to Camp Snaps yourself and get them that way. Camp Snaps are my favorite, best quality. So they have little prongs. There's a female piece and a male piece. You can tell the difference because the male's got the little part stuck out and the woman's got a little in cove. All right, then you're gonna need one of these guys. I'm going to use this to actually puncture a hole so that way I can install my snaps. I'm going to guess where the middle is. You can always just grab your ruler, put the stitchings down and just puncture where the middle is. But I'm going to freestyle it today and I'm going to guess. And wherever you puncture, just push it through real good. You can also do this before cutting. Um, I do do it before cutting when I'm doing like a group set and I have a big sheet instead of doing just singles. So that's an option. It's easier that way. Sometimes it's just hard to hold that tiny little flap. Okay, you go ahead and push in your snaps. Press down. This actually looks a tiny bit off to me, so I'm going to move her over a tiny bit to the... There we go. Again, you got this really sharp piece. Stick it into where you made a hole. Ow, and I just let him, I'm pretty sure I got through. Press, 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 press down. And now we're going to need to be install it with this. I use Dritz. I just got this at Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon, but you can always buy a press, um, a table press, a tabletop press, or there's other brands that sell this. I always like to put the woman on the bottom. Don't ask me why, but I'm going to go ahead and just stick it in like that and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. I don't know if you can tell it, but you know you've done it right if you can see this tiny piece got smushed. And this was the pokey deal that was sticking out. See that pokey piece? That gets smashed down and that's what holds it down. Now the male piece on top. I'm a creature of habit, so I have to do it the same way every time, all the time. Does it make a difference? I don't think it does. It probably doesn't. And now here we are. We've successfully installed our cam snaps. So the last part is how would you like to use this keychain? You could actually just hang it on something as is. It would fit onto a backpack, a luggage tag. You could hook it up to the luggage. Anything that it could fold over, you can stick inside. I mean, not that I have anything, but I mean, just for an example, you know, you could just clip it onto a bunch of stuff. It doesn't work on my scissors, but anything thin, you know, you get the idea. 
So what I do want you to know is here's some stuff that I commonly use. You can use a split ring. This is just a simple silver split ring. Also get those on Amazon. A uh, black one. This hardware is a little more durable. I feel like it has a bit more of a modern luxurious feel to it. You can tell it's heavier than say your average split ring. Or you can use a lobster clasp on a D-ring. Um, so that's what this is. And this could, you could hook your keychain onto stuff. You could hook it onto a backpack. You could do that with your keys. I mean, whatever you want. I lately have been leaning towards these black ones. I just like how they look. And so you'll just press the ends together. And that's it. The lovely thing about this is that you can actually change out your hardware. So if I decided I didn't want them, I could easily go to a lobster clasp and same idea. Love it. It's versatile. It's awesome. I have to apologize. I have a six month old who just found her voice this week and she also wants to teach you guys how to make really cool things. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. This is something that I designed and you can find this file at designsbydreaco at etsy.com. Um, the design will be in the link below. I'd love to hear your feedback.